never heard that one. 80% of performance issues, all about the environment, not yeah. the individual. Right. It's everywhere you turn in this field. Like it's gospel or something. Exactly. But is there actually any truth to it? That's our deep dive today. Taking a closer look at that whole performance improvement myth. Yeah, the staying power of this 80-20 thing is wild. We're digging into this eLearn Magazine article, chasing down the elusive credits for facts and fictions in learning and improvement. Okay. Because they really get into the weeds on where this claim comes from. It's a rabbit hole for sure. It's a real rabbit hole. The article starts out just asking, you know, where did this 80-20 even come from? Simple question. Right. Should be an easy answer, right? You'd think so, but... Turns out, not so much. No, it's all over the place. The article, it's like Gilbert, maybe, or Rumler and Brash. Some even say Deming. I've heard Deming, too. Right. And then others take it way back, like Pareto. It's like a big game of performance improvement telephone. Totally. And it gets even weirder because even the numbers are all over the map. Yeah, 80-20, 85-15. I even saw one article, they said 96-40. See, and that right there tells you something. If nobody can agree on the number or where it came from. How much can you trust it? Exactly. Yeah. Like, are we basing important decisions on this? We should probably at least know what it is. 100%. <laughs> and then on top of that, the article gets into this whole, what is system versus environment thing? Oh, yeah. Are they the same? <laughs> are they different? Muddy water. It's messy. So the authors, they decided enough is enough. We're going to the data. We're going to find proof for this 80-20 thing once and for all. And they went all in, talking to big names, digging through research. They even looked at the comments on LinkedIn and Facebook. No stone unturned. They were in the ISPI Google group. You know, the International Society for Performance Improvement. Sure. All the pros. All the big conversations happening there. Mm. Crickets. Nothing. You're kidding. For all the talk, for all the opinions, they couldn't find hard evidence to back up this 80-20 claim. Wow. It really makes you think. This idea is everywhere we turn, and yet... The data is just not there. It's kind of funny when you think about it, but it actually leads to a pretty big takeaway for people in our line of work. It does. You know, the article, they talk about how the authors have this big aha mm -hmm. moment, and it wasn't about finding the magic number, the percentage. Right. It was realizing they were asking the wrong questions this whole time. Makes sense. And one of the experts they talked to, Fred Nichols, he had this great point. I think it really sums it up. He said something like, Every solution we come up with for a performance problem, it always comes back to the people involved. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if this 80-20 thing was true, and who knows if it is, but even if it was, yeah. getting stuck on that number, it kind of makes us forget about the human side of all this. We're not just dealing with systems. We're dealing with people. That's right. You know, it reminds me of this one company I worked with. They were convinced their sales were down because their CRM system was a mess. Yeah. You know, the software they were using. They were ready to spend a fortune on a brand new system, the whole nine yards. But it turned out the problem wasn't the system at all. It was the people using it or not using it. How so? The top performers on their sales team, they were actually avoiding the CRM altogether. Said it was clunky, it took too long. So they found their own workarounds, which meant their training was out of date. And frankly, they weren't all that motivated to use it. Interesting. So it wasn't the environment holding them back. It was the lack of training and the motivation piece. Exactly. And the article talks about this other important idea, too. It quotes Dr. Dale Brethauer. Okay. And he says, listen, performance environments, they're always changing. It's fluid. It's not static. Right. So even if you could put a number on the environment's impact, which we know is a stretch, but even if you could, the situation itself is constantly in motion. It'd be like using the same old map to navigate a city that's always under construction. I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting hung up on this magic percentage, yeah. Breath Hour says we should be asking a totally different question, a better question. Yeah. Which is... What's that? What needs to happen to actually improve performance in this specific situation? Yeah. Like right here, right now. Now you're getting it. It's not about these big general ideas. It's about analyzing what's really going on, yeah. who's involved, what are the tasks, the tools, is there support? We're really getting into the nitty gritty of that particular situation. And yeah, sometimes it might be the environment that needs to change, Sure. but we don't assume that's the answer. We let the evidence lead the way. Right. It's about being more holistic. You know, I, I thought it was interesting. The article, they didn't stop at the 80-20 rule. They went on to talk about other stuff we take for granted in this field that might not be so solid. 
<laughs> they even brought up Dale's Cone of Experience. No, that's a classic. I know, right? Yeah. For anyone who hasn't heard of it, it's this visual that's supposed to show how people learn best. Right, with the more active stuff at the top and the passive stuff at the yeah, bottom. Exactly. Yeah. But the article and a lot of learning experts are saying the research behind it is shaky at best. Hmm. Interesting. Definitely got me thinking. But that's their point, isn't it? Whether it's this 80-20 thing or Dale's Cone. We got to be careful about what we think we know. Exactly. We need to be questioning, looking for proof, being more rigorous. 100%. Because if we're just clinging to these myths, these catchy ideas that sound good but aren't actually true, it like, hurts our credibility in the long run. Makes sense. Yeah. If we're basing our solutions on shaky ground, how effective can we really be? Exactly. We can't say we're all about data-driven solutions and then turn around and rely on these outdated models or, you know, flimsy evidence. We gotta walk the walk. We do. It's about integrity, holding ourselves to a higher standard. I like that. Because when we get lazy and go for the easy answers, it usually comes back to bite us. It can. And, you know, it all comes back to that main takeaway from this deep dive. We can get so caught up in this environment versus individual debate. Yeah. But it's kind of a distraction, isn't it? It is. It's like we're missing the bigger picture. Totally. The real question, the one that actually matters is what's really causing those performance issues, right? Yeah. And then how do we fix them? Yeah. And hey, maybe training's part of it, maybe not. Right, right. The solution should come from the problem, not the other way around. Yeah, exactly. I love how they put it in the article. They said, what matters is identifying the real causes of performance issues and implementing the right solutions, whether they involve training or not. That's so good. It's like we're performance detectives, you know? There you go. We got to do the investigating before we jump to conclusions. Love it. Yeah. And honestly, that's what makes this work so interesting. It does. Every day is a little different. For sure. You get to be curious, think critically, always looking for the best way to help people actually succeed. Exactly. Sometimes it's a training thing. Sometimes it's motivation. Sometimes it's a process that just doesn't work. Mm. Or, yeah, maybe even something in the environment, like we were saying. Could be. But... We don't go in assuming anything. Yeah. We got to look at the evidence, see what it tells us. A hundred percent. So to everyone listening out there, yep. next time you hear someone throw out that 80-20 rule, you know, about performance improvement. Oh, yeah, it's come in. Think back to this conversation. Don't just take it at face value. Challenge it. Dig a little deeper. What's the evidence? Ask the tough questions. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we're all about results, right? Measurable results. Yes, real change. Yeah. And we can't do that if we're holding on to myths instead of looking at the facts. Well said. It takes critical thinking, challenging what we think we know, and honestly, just a real passion for figuring out what really truly works. Couldn't have said it better myself. And speaking of which, if you want to dive even deeper into this, definitely check out that full article from eLearn Magazine. Yeah, it's a good one. We'll put the link in the show notes. It's got even more great insights and examples that show just how important that evidence-based approach is. Really makes you think. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe it'll spark some good conversations back at your own workplace. The more we question, the more we learn, and the more we can make a difference. Right? 100%. That's what it's all about. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. Keep those brains buzzing, and we'll catch you next time.